Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is good. And he's just going to keep on getting gooder. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. It says here in Deuteronomy, the Lord will give, will conquer your enemies when they attack you. They will attack you from one direction and they will scatter from you in seven. And the Lord will guarantee a blessing on everything you do and you'll fill your storehouses with grain. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land in which he has given you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you today that you're doing that. Father, I thank you that your blessing rests upon us. Father, I thank you. Oh, yes, your provision is more than enough. And Father, that we, we sow into your kingdom. And Lord, the offerings and the, the generous giving that's been brought today, Lord, I thank you that your blessing rests upon it. And Lord, your blessing rests upon the giver. We declare that today, Lord. And we thank you for it. We thank you, Lord, that you're moving mightily within our lives and re releasing into our lives your favor and your blessing. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Dar Daryl has a prayer focus for us. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, oh, Father, we just thank you for your presence. Yes, hallelujah. Mm. Let us never take it lightly. Hallelujah. May the wind of the Holy Spirit flow even now in a greater way. Just receive that. Hmm. Just the love of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just the love of the Father. Mm. We love you, Lord. We worship you. We glorify your holy name. We honor your presence. We thank you that you are here with us in an amazing way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Yes, yes. Thank you for the fire of the Holy Spirit consuming us. Thank you for the blood of Jesus in our lives and over our family and over this property. Mm. Do amazing healing and amazing wholeness in our life, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, financially. May you be lifted up. and glorified today. Hmm. Like to share in Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the sky. Praise him in the heavens. Praise him all his angels. Praise him all his heavenly assembly. Praise him, O sun and moon. Praise the most shiny stars. Praise the most highest heaven and waters above the sky. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For he commanded and they were in existence. They were created out of nothing. He established them so they would endure. He issued a decree that will not be revoked. Praise the Lord from the earth. You see creatures and the ocean.
Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we bless you, Lord. Yes, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Praise the Lord. Flow in this place. Flow in our lives. Yes, reveal revelation knowledge unto us, Lord, that takes us from glory to glory to glory. Yes, hallelujah. Yes, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, hallelujah. You may be seated. While we're in this atmosphere and as we're praising and worshiping, the Spirit of the Lord is on the move. I believe God is re- going to re- release revelation knowledge into you. That's how we grow. You know, we've been talking about Matthew chapter 16, and Jesus said, who do people say I am? And Peter said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And, and Jesus said, you know what? That was not revealed to you by humans. That was revealed to you by God. And he said, upon that principle, upon the principle of revelation knowledge, of God releasing into you his word, you're going to grow. And if, if, if you are not receiving the word of the Lord and getting revelation, or you're not getting manna from heaven, you're not growing spiritually. We need that to sustain us. It's like you need food every day of your life or you get pretty miserable. <laughs> and, and, and your body, when it goes without, gets weaker. The same thing is true with us. When, when we go without spiritual food, we get weaker spiritually. And so God releases his manna. He releases his revelation into our lives. And when he does that, we grab a hold of that. And, and he said here, I'm going to show you how to apply that key of revelation to your life. He says it's through binding and loosing. And, and we talked about how that binding, sometimes the word binding means that you re- forbid something from ha- a- operating in your life. And then there's times when, when the word binding means you glue something together. And I'm gluing myself to the word of the Lord. The revelation of God that he, he reveals to me, I'm gluing myself to it and I'm saying, yes, Lord, I receive. I confess this is you and that this is for me. And so I'm binding myself to that. And when I bind myself to that, then the power of God is released in my life. It's loosed in my life. And, you know, sometimes people get so caught up in Binding the devil, binding that and binding this, and there's times when that needs to be done. But more, what needs to be done more is bind yourself to the word. When you bind yourself to the word, the devil's defeated. And so, so I, I, I attach myself to the word. I declare the word. When God reveals the word to me, I declare it. And there's times in my life when I'm, I'm uh, walking through something, and I'm, I'm waiting to hear that revelation from God. So I'll get into the scripture, and, I, and whatever topic it is, I'll look for scripture dealing with that topic, and I'll just start declaring it and uh, start attaching myself to that area of the word, and pretty soon what I find, there, <laughs> it's released into my life, and it becomes revelation knowledge to me. It becomes real, and all of a sudden I say, yes, this is God. You grab a hold of that, and, uh, and that's how you grow. We go from glory to glory. We go from revelation to revelation. Um, today I want to talk about the power of praise. And, and, and praise is, is a part of that key and, uh, that releases revelation into our lives and that we grow thereby. And in Psalms chapter 126, it says, When the Lord brought back his exiles to Jerusalem, it was like a dream. We were filled with laughter and we sang for joy. And the other nations said, what amazing things the Lord has done for them. Other nations said, what amazing things the Lord has done for them. When the the glory and the goodness of God flows through your life, those around you are going to see it. And they're going to be amazed at the goodness of God. That's part of that testimony that you're living. You're walking out the goodness of God. 
The Bible says it's the goodness of God that draws people unto Jesus. So when they see the goodness of God in our life, people are drawn to that goodness. And it gives us opportunity to share Jesus with them. Yes, the Lord has done amazing things for us. What joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, as streams renew the desert. Those who plant in tears will harvest with shouts of joy. They weep as they go to plant their seed, but they sing as they return with the harvest. I want to share with you today some aspects of, of praise. I love this passage of Scripture. The people, yes, God has done great things. Man, we're excited what God is doing. Listen, if you're not excited about what God is doing, you need a fresh revelation. You need God to do a download within, into your life. God is doing great things. And, 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 and praise. You notice here that they got excited, they were laughing, they were cheering, they were dancing and jumping and excited. Man, that ought to be a picture of the church. I want to talk to you today about the value and the significance of praise. A praising church that is, is excited about God and, and, and their, their hands are raised, they're, they're raising their voice and, and dancing and moving before God. That's a church where the anointing of God will be released. God loves the praises of his people. And when we get into that mode of honoring God and celebrating the goodness of God, the anointing of God just fills the place. That's why we start our services out with praise. We want his presence here. Praise creates a force field. It's like an atmosphere that is created when we praise God. God inhabits the praises of his people. The word inhabit means he rules from the praises of his people. Listen, if you are not a praising person, and when I say praise, I don't mean you've got to be fanatical and jumping and hollering, Ooh, you know, and acting that way all the time, but it's good sometimes to act that way. But it's having a heart of praise and thanksgiving to God. And, and, and when we, we live that kind of a lifestyle, the anointing and presence of God just flows into our lives all the time. I want to create an atmosphere in my life of God's anointing and God's presence. I want to live out of that. And, and, and I want to stay connected with the Lord. You know, um, whatever, whatever you praise or whatever you give words to will dominate your life. We all go through good times and bad times in life. But when I go through a bad time, I want the presence of God activated in my life. Just because I go through a bad time doesn't mean that God's left me or that God is mad at me. We live in a fallen world, an imperfect world, and imperfect things happen. And from time to time, we're all going to go through trials and tribulations. That's part of life. And God looks at those as opportunities to strengthen our life. God looks at those times as an opportunity. Sometimes we look at those things as, as a downer. But whatever you exalt in your life will control your life. You exalt depression, depression will rule your life. You, you exalt hate, hate will rule your life. It will create an atmosphere in your life of misery. And, it, and the devil then gets involved in that, and he brings all kinds of accusations, even against God, and says, yeah, you know what? God doesn't really love you. God's mad at you. God's not going to help you. Look at all this situation you're in. Look how you feel. And so many people, whatever they feel is authoritative in their life. And what I've found is this. There's times I have good feelings. There's times I have bad feelings. But I've learned not to let the bad feelings dominate my life. And there's times I've told Nadine, I said, look, I'm having a bad day today. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'm fine. And tomorrow will be a, a different day. What I find is tomorrow is a good day. My feelings are different. In fact, my feelings can change that day. You ever, ever got up in the morning and go to work? Oh, I don't feel like going to work. Oh, you, know. you, you just kind of get there, and after you're there, all of a sudden you feel like being there. <laughs> it's a good day. Well, if you would have went by your feelings, you might have stayed home. And if you do that enough, you lose your job. No, hey, so I'm having a bad feeling. Well, great. 
That's not going to dominate and rule my life. And, and I cast down that feeling, I release the goodness of God. I release the word of the Lord in my life. Who do you want to walk through the troubles in life that you're having? Who do you want to walk through them with you? Do you want depression and discouragement and, well, I'm a loser? It's going to be your buddy to walk through those situations with you? I choose God. Now, if I'm going to choose God to walk through those trials and tribulations, God's not going to honor my, If I allow depression in my life, he's not going to honor that. He's not, he's not going to honor hatred in my life. He's not going to draw close to that. But he'll draw close to a humble heart that is yielded to him and that is celebrating him above all the trials and tribulations. I learned to celebrate Jesus in the midst of my trials and tribulations. And that then maintains his presence. He walks with me then. And he guides me through it. And, 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 and he's got a plan. And he's got a way for me to walk through this in a way that will bring victory to me and not defeat. See, we need to see. We need to see trials and tribulations like God sees them. I'm walking through this trial and tribulation. And, and if I'm not careful, I can get depressed and I get down and... And uh, uh, life becomes miserable. But I need to see the end. I'm seeing the right now moment. This is bad. I don't like this. This hurts. And that's what I'm seeing. But I'm not seeing what God sees at the end. I'm not seeing the victory that he has for me. Unless I maintain his presence. And I say, okay, yeah, God, this is tough. But Lord... I'm looking to you, leading God me through this. Let's walk through this together. See Jesus walking through your trial and tribulation with you. It doesn't matter how you feel. Just because you don't feel, uh, you feel depression doesn't mean he's not there with you. Remember a couple weeks ago we talked about take a praise pill. And so you celebrate Jesus in the midst of your trials and tribulations. David said, offer the sacrifice of praise to the Lord. It's a gift. Lord, I'm giving you a gift of praise. Lord, I'm not going to give you a gift of depression. I'm not going to give you a gift of hatred today. I will not let that flow through my life to you. But Lord, I, give you, I honor you today. I give you praise and thanksgiving. Knowing this, Lord, that you are here with me. And you're guiding me through this. And this, as I go through this, there's gonna, it's going to be a time of growth and development for me. And, and the end result is victory. Victory. Ephesians chapter 6, or chapter 5. It says, don't be drunk with depression. I mean, uh, wine. <laughs> but put depression in there. Put hatred in there. Don't be drunk with it. You know, a lot of people, when they go through a trial and tribulation in life, they get drunk on the negative. And, and it, it controls their behavior, and it controls their perception in life. And then it affects those around them. And it affects their relationship with God. He says, but don't do that. He says, that will ruin your life. But he says, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and to yourself. Speak the word of the Lord to yourself, making music to the Lord in your hearts, and give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I can give thanks because I know this, there's victory at the end. I was talking to somebody a couple of weeks ago, and they've been going through a tough time in life, you know, and, and uh, so I've been staying with them and encouraging them and helping them to walk through it and such, and, and uh, they said, you know, I, I think I'm finally seeing an end to this, and I said, yeah, you know, I think I am too. I said, I think I'm seeing a light at the end of the tunnel. I said, for a long time, I haven't didn't see no light, <laughs> but now I think I can see the light. <laughs> We kept on applying the principles of God and kept walking through it. And uh, there's light at the end. And the let light is God. He walks with you and he brings victory to you. Secondly, praise releases God's ability in our life. Listen, I want God's ability in my life. 
all the time, but especially when I'm going through trials and tribulations, I want God's ability. Because I know in myself I can't handle it, guys. But with God, I can. And God will help me to maintain emotional stability and strength in my life in the midst of the trial and tribulation. You know, it's kind of like a guitar. I'm not going to I'm not going to touch it. Sigh. Wouldn't want to hurt it in any way. But that's a nice looking guitar. But that guitar makes no music by itself. It's got to have somebody pluck a string. And just being a guitar will not make music. And we're kind of that way as well. We need our strings plucked by the Holy Spirit. And, and we need the music, the music of God to flow in and through our lives. When we connect with the Holy Spirit, the ability of God flows through us. We become instruments of God's glory in the midst of trial and tribulation. God's ability flowing through us. You know, it's kind of like airplanes. Airplanes, they need thrust. It's called the, the law of lift. And, the, and that's the law of lift is, is that principle where planes can take off and get into the sky. But it's not just the wings under, the wind, uh, under their wings. You know that song, he's the uh, wind under my wings or whatever, you know, and that's a nice song. I like that song. But just wind blowing on the planes doesn't send the plane off. The plane has to have what they call thrust. And that comes from the engine. And when the engine uh, has enough thrust and the plane goes fast enough, it takes off. And, and, and when, when, the, when the plane is taken off, you don't, you don't go at an idle speed. You don't go at a cruising speed. You go at a takeoff speed. And they got what they call the red line. And, and the pilot will push that throttle all the way past that red line. And all of a sudden, that plane has thrust. And, and as that plane goes and, and that thrust builds, pretty soon the plane lifts up into the air. And so a plane needs thrust in order for it to fly. Praise is like that law of the lift. When we praise God, praise is like that thrust. It releases and activates the Holy Spirit in our lives. When I'm praising the Lord, all of a sudden, the presence of the Lord is giving me some thrust. Let's go, Tim. Come on, we can make it. Let's go. And pretty soon, praise lifts me above the trials and the tribulations. And up there I see as God sees. <laughs> I want to see my situation as God sees it. And, and I want him to give thrust in my life and take, take me above the storms of life. And he directs us and leads us to the victory. Praise directs, is directed to God. Praise that is directed to God will release the Holy Spirit's power and lift you above your trials and tribulations. And that's the best way to go through them. It's with God giving you strength and ability. Praise is a weapon that destroys every weapon that's used against us. And the devil will make, uh, he'll take every opportunity he can in your life. And he'll look for trials and tribulations to enter your life and to bring condemnation against God and against you. And he'll attack you with all kinds of words and ideas and thoughts. And it'll mess up your emotions. Don't dwell there, but release and activate the praise and presence of God. Hosea, chapter 2. Talks about God sowing into our lives. Verse 21, in that day I will answer, says the Lord, and I will answer the sky as it pleads for clouds, and the sky will answer the earth with rain. Then the earth will answer with thirsty cries of the grain and the grapevines and the olive trees, and they in turn will answer, and it's the word Jezreel. The word Jezreel means God sows. So God will sow, is sowing into your life, and God is sowing your, his word into your life, his goodness into your life. And as God sows into your life, there's a harvest then that comes into your life that beautifies and blesses you. And what we need to realize is God is sowing to the earth. He's sowing into your life because he wants you to have a harvest of blessing and a harvest of, provi harvest of provision and more than enough. And so as I'm praising the Lord, I'm opening up my heart and say, God, plant in me. Plant your word in me. 
plant your plans and your purpose in me. Lord, let it come forth and let it grow and become. Let my life become what you want it to be. As he says here, at that time I will plant a crop of Israelites and raise them for myself. And I, and I will show love to those I call not love. And to those I called not my people, I will say, now you are my people. And they will reply, you are our God. God says, I'm going to sow into people's lives. God is sowing into your life. Receive the seed that God is sowing into your life. And, and let it grow and develop. It's going to bring forth a harvest in your life that's going to be phenomenal. And it's going to transform your life. And, and it's going to make you into what God wants you to be. Thirdly, praise announces the victory of Jesus. It's like calling Jesus to help. When the children of Israel are walking around the walls of Jericho, it, and they didn't know what God was going to do. God says, walk around Jericho and give me praise. Give me praise. Walk around Jericho. Give me praise. And he says, blow the shofar. <laughs> I hope our walls don't fall out. <laughs> And the praise of God stopped the power of darkness. And it releases the ability of God. And so God's, it, it, when we praise God, you know what we're doing? We're calling God. Hey, God, come on in. Come on down, God. Take over this situation. We need your help. And it's a way that we celebrate the goodness and ability of God. Praise is so important for you to maintain the right kind of emotions in the midst of life. We praise God at all times, in the good times and the bad times. Hebrews 15, uh, 13, verse 15, Therefore, let us offer through Jesus a continual sacrifice of praise to God, proclaiming our allegiance to his name. Man, what I'm doing, I'm praising God. I say, God, I'm on your side. Lord, and I bless you today. And I thank you for today, and I thank you for what you're doing in my life. Because I know this. I can celebrate him in the midst of trials and tribulations because he's leading me on to victory. And he knows how to take this situation in my life and turn it around for good. So I'm, I'm giving him praise, and I'm celebrating him in the midst of a tough time in life. Fourth, praise energizes your life with God's presence said that they were, in Psalms 126, that they were singing and dancing and giving praise unto God. They were excited. I mean, <laughs> I, I appreciate our praise and worship on Sunday morning. When you guys all come, and I can hear you saying, yeah, God, go, God. And I hear you clap, you know, and sometimes we have flags. and Sometimes we have dancing, you know. And, man, that's all, all wonderful stuff. Celebrating the goodness of God. And I know there's people here that, that have needs. We're celebrating Jesus because we're believing for him to meet that need. So in the midst even of trials and tribulations, we're blessing the Lord. You know, dead people don't praise God. <laughs> Neither do dead Christians. <laughs> but there's a dance of victory. You know, when you go to a sporting event and your team wins, People, yes, yes, good, hey, we won, woo, 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 you know, and they're all, they're all excited, you know, and, and uh, they have that victory dance. Have you ever seen a loser dance? A, I call it the loser shuffle, and, and I changed it now to the Husker shuffle. No, we lost again. When are we ever going to win? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we used to. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you something. When there's victory in the camp, there's praise in the camp. People are excited. God is doing great things. Listen, if you come to church without an expectation that God's going to do something, he probably won't do it. He for sure probably won't do it for you because you get your heart closed. You're coming with no expectation. You're coming casually to God. Well, well, see what God's going to do today. 
Probably nothing. Man, I don't want to live that way. I want to live with an expectation. God's going to do good here. Polite, polite praise. <laughs> okay, time to praise God. Let's everybody get in your position, pious position, and let's give God praise, you know. <sighs> hey, it's exciting. Time for church to start. Let's go. God's going to move. Miracles going to happen. People are going to get saved. The kingdom of darkness is being defeated. Let's be excited about it. That creates atmosphere of victory. And if there ought to be an atmosphere of victory, any place on the earth, it ought to be in the church. It ought to be in your life. People ought to see your life and, and be drawn to it and say, wow, God is really good to that person. Man, I wish I had a life like that. I wish I could go through tough times like that person had. Man, they, they weathered the storm so good. Praise expresses the goodness and greatness of God. Uncertain sound is lifeless and paralyzing. Oh, we have a definite sound. Give praise to God. Psalms 22 says that God inhabits the praises of his people. That word inhabit is, is a, a word that's used for kings in the Bible times. And when, it, when a king would inhabit his kingdom, his domain, means he was ruling over it. What the psalmist is saying here is God rules over those who praise him. You know why? Because those who praise God are letting him rule. Those that don't praise God are shutting off his rule. Trusting in, in human ability, trusting in human ideas, and not trusting in God. But those that trust in the Lord will see the glory of God. And they will see the victory of God. You see, and I encourage you, have the intensity of, uh, in your life of praise. doesn't mean you have to be loud. Uh, there are times when you need to make a shout of praise. There are times for that. But mild praise won't give you the life and, and usher in the presence of the Lord that you need. Sometimes you've got to get excited. <laughs> Expectant. Have an expectation. God's going to do good things. Man, I'm going through this situation. I don't know what all God's going to do, but I know it's going to be good. And I'm, I'm putting the throttle past the red mark. <laughs> I want the thrust of the Holy Spirit released and activated in my life. Going past the red mark to the blood of Jesus Christ. The power of God in my life in the midst of this situation in life. God is so good. Amen. Praise the Lord. Worship team, would you come? We're, when we gather, we're pushing the throttle forward. This is not a casual moment, but it's a moment where the power of God is moving and flowing. And I want to encourage you as a lifestyle. Praise. God, I praise you. I don't care what's going on. I'm just going to praise you, Lord. <laughs> You're so good. And just because I go through a tough time in life doesn't mean there's anything wrong with me. just means I'm going through a tough time. Now, in that, God's going to use that, at that tough time to strengthen me, and he may use it to shift some things in my life and to remove some things from my life. There may be some attitudes that, you know, need to be removed from my life. But God says, Tim, in the midst of this, I'm going to take an opportunity here to perfect your life a little more, to strengthen you and take you to another level in me. You see, sometimes we, God, I want to grow. God, I want to go in you. And God says, great. Love that attitude. Now, here's some hindrances in your life, Tim, that are hindering you from going where I want you to go. Then he'll work that little bit more from you. So that I can have more. And throughout 
the baggage that's not necessary. So I have one here. If you're here today, and you're saying, you know what? I need a prayer of agreement. I just need to get myself repositioned. Let God do that today. Let his word become strong in your life. And give him praise today. No matter what you're going through, give him praise. You have you, you having a good day? Give him praise. Let him know that you're thankful for the day. And that you realize he's a part of it. stand together. I'd like to have our prayer team come. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you'd like to have prayer today, feel free to come forward. Let's let the Spirit of the Lord kind of speak to our hearts and confirm some things today. And as you have been in the service today, maybe there has been something that God has revealed to you. There, there, there's stirring in your heart. Follow that. Say, Lord, I know you're doing something in my heart today. And Lord, I, I want to receive all that you have. And I give, I give presence to that. Focus on it today, Lord. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. And let's worship him if you want prayer.